So at this time, I have the pleasure, and those of you who have talked to me about this person know I'm a, I'm a super fan of our very own Jenny Al-Morani. Um, Jenny is a Thomas More's inaugural director of the Dr. Anthony and Geraldine Zimbrot Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, and is also going to be teaching as a professor here. She is the founder of the Lewis Group, a boutique consulting and investment company focused on consulting and coaching services for entrepreneurs, small businesses, and entrepreneurship outreach programs. She earned her undergrad here at Thomas More University, which is how I originally met her, and completed her master's in entrepreneurship from Trinity College in Dublin, uh, where she focused on, global, on a global perspective of entrepreneurship <coughs> ecosystems, the entrepreneurship process, and building entrepreneurial programs. And she has one of the most positive attitudes I have ever seen. So please welcome Jenny. Oh, Oak Hills. Chris, it's Oak Hills. Okay, so if you know anything about Cincinnati, 
Cincinnati, we indicate where we're from by saying where we went to high school. I know, some people just roll their eyes. <laughs> so I grew up in Dent, Ohio, and as for as long as I can remember, there I am in the pink, so cute again. I've always had this entrepreneurial bug. I grew up in my dad's small business in Cheviot, or Cheviot, or Chevois. <laughs> on the west side, depending on where you're from. And my brother and sister there, I can remember, stealing their things and selling them at the end of the driveway or trading just any way I can make a quick buck. So I've always had this entrepreneurial buck. As Angie said, I graduated from Thomas More College back then in 2005, where I earned my undergraduate degree in business. That's me at graduation, probably somewhere out that way, with my mini-me. And I'm going to tell you why this picture is so important in just a couple slides. Okay, a show of hands. I'm going to sneak within. How many of you have done something untraditional and maybe gone back to school? You're not in the traditional path. We're told it should be yes. Thank you. I see you, I see all of you. So 14 years later, after that last slide, I took a risk and I innovated and shook up my life and decided to move across the world to Ireland to earn my master's degree in entrepreneurship. I didn't know Angie was gonna say all this stuff. This was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> so I earned my master's degree at Trinity College Dublin. What I really loved about it, it was founded by a woman, Queen Elizabeth I. Has anyone been to Ireland? Oh, it's so beautiful. That's why I love the rain now. <laughs> That's a photo of most of my cohort. When I was there and I took my family there, I said, I'm not eating, I'm not sleeping, I'm not even going to spend time with you. I want to do as much exploring as possible, learn entrepreneurship on a global level, so I could bring that experience back home, teach entrepreneurship and innovation on a global scale, and share my experience in settings just like this one. That's a photo of most of my cohort, cohort like I said. This is important because 44 different nationalities were represented in my cohort. I could learn about entrepreneurship without even leaving the classroom on a global level. It changed my life. I'm breathing hard because I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> okay, moving on about me, this is my family. My husband is here, this person on this side, he's in the back of the room. Abdullah, everyone say hi to Abdullah. The other person on that side of me is that mini me, all grown up. In his blue, he just graduated from the University of Kentucky last year, I call him about a seven-month-old adult. <laughs> but that's him all grown up. He was with me at my graduation, and I got to see him at his graduation. That's why that photo has so much significance. And my family, I love them. They give me this place to be innovative, to shake things up. They never know what I'm going to come up with. And they just ride along with it. And that's so important to set that foundation to thrive. This is serious stuff. Some of you already know me, but I love chocolate almost as much as I love entrepreneurship. So much that in this area a few years ago, I said, my favorite food group is not represented here, and that's brownies. So I'm going to start making vegan brownies in my home kitchen, and I sold it to restaurants in our local area. If you ever want to hear about failure in the kitchen, come talk to me after the conference. I've got some stories. Okay, so this is what I'm doing back here at Thomas More University. As Angie said and stole my presentation, I am the new director of the Zembrot Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. This is a hub for our community and students to gain these entrepreneurial thinking skills and entrepreneurial mindset and of course, start and grow businesses from their passion. The way I see it, our center has the, both, the best of both worlds. 
We are, at a Catholic liberal arts, amazing, prestigious university. We have a community-driven approach to education, and that's how I'm designing the center. And the center serves every student of every major here on campus. Every student of every major. A lot of centers only are housed in the business college and they serve business students, but we're very intentional in serving every student of every major. The other part is we are located in this thriving, exciting, entrepreneurial and innovative ecosystem. There's one sitting right here at this table, Jill. So coming up, May 3rd, we have the Rolling Capital Saints Shark Challenge. This is so exciting because students have been working all semester in their class on a business idea, working with another alum to validate the idea, market the idea, figure out how to monetize the idea, build a business plan, and on May 3rd, they're going to pitch their business ideas in front of their classmates, their faculty, our campus community, and we are opening the doors to our community as well. So I'm going to give you one second to scan that QR code to find out more information. Did anyone go to the Kentucky Chamber Women's Conference? Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. Okay. Oh, there I am as a cute little baby again. As you can see in this room, you don't have to go far to find inspiration. You don't have to go far at all. My mom is here today. She's going to stand up and wave to everyone. <laughs> In 1978, my mom decided to shake up her life and innovate the family business model and adopt the cutest baby in the world <laughs> in Seoul, Korea. She brought me back home, and I can remember, and you will see her nodding her head, Mom, why are you so hard on me? You're challenging me. You're tough on me. But what I didn't realize until I got older is Mom, right here, was preparing me for a world that sometimes can be tough and challenging on women. What she taught me were the best transferable skills in the world, how to persevere, determination, and grit. I love that word, grit. But most importantly, to never, ever give up on your dream and to always work hard. So one more round of applause for my mother. So that second picture, I would say 40 years later, my mom and I climbed Franconia Ridge and we did a summit across. It's a vertical, four miles up, I forget how many feet up it is, and I think about 10 minutes in, I was like, Mom, please wait a minute, I can't keep up. Alright, I know what you all are thinking, I'm going to talk about Oprah and how much she inspires me. And that is true. Oprah inspires me. But she inspires me for a different reason. It's her power of lifting others. And there's an entrepreneur that credits so much of her success to what I call the Oprah effect. Has anyone used this product? So, Carol Zotter was a brand built out of a little tiny apartment in New York City 
by Lisa Price. Lisa experimented with scent. She couldn't find scent that she really loved in the store, and she was working full time for the Cosby Show as a screenwriter. And as a way to wind down at night and on the weekends, she just had this little experiment in her kitchen with scent, and then she noticed she had some dry skin. She said, I don't really like the body butters out there either for my skin, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the scent, figure out a body butter. She put it together. Her mom got wind of it. She loved the product, and she said, Lisa, you gotta sell this stuff. The women at church would love it. So she produced it in her kitchen, put it in baby jars, sold out every Sunday at church, and her business grew, and then it took a crazy turn when Oprah said, Carol Sauter is on my favorite things list. Her business scaled like crazy, like bonkers. And her time came up at the Cosby Show, meaning the Cosby Show went off air. She said, what am I gonna do? Her mom said, well, you should sell this product. And she did because her mom motivated her and supported her to do that. She scaled the business. She sold the business for two, excuse me, for an undisclosed amount. I got ahead of myself. She sold for an undisclosed amount to L'Oreal, but the weirdest thing happened. What do you think happened after that? Hmm? She got hate mail. She got hate mail, and hate mail from women, saying, you're a sellout, we need you out there. We need a woman entrepreneur. Why did you sell your business? How dare you? And the reason why this story inspires me is Lisa stuck to her core values and did what was right for her and her family. So as you can see from the last story, society can be hard on women. They tell you, you're a student, you're a career woman, you're a mom. You should be all these things, you're a daughter, you're a wife. But what I've learned about innovation is we don't have to define it. We add value in all those different layers. But now you're probably wondering, what the heck does popcorn have to do with that? <laughs> Has anyone had boom chicka pop? What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> Who else has had it? What's your favorite player? I think that's the original of Carmel. Who else? What's your favorite player? The purple. Purple. Oh my gosh. Am I the only one that likes sea salt? Okay, thank you. All right. So this is Annie Bassey. She's one of my favorite entrepreneurs. That's one of my favorite flavors of her popcorn. She was working as a nurse practitioner, and one day during a family business meeting, she said, we don't have any money for college for our kids. And in the forecasting, we're still not going to have any money. So she innovated her life. She decided to start a side hustle, Angie's Kettle Corn. She would go to work as a nurse practitioner during the day, during the week, sometimes on the weekend. She would come to her kids' sporting events, set up the kettle corn tent, let those smells come out, and she would make popcorn. One day, someone came up to her and said, oh, aren't you my nurse? Why are you selling popcorn? And she said, you know, you can be more than one thing. And that's her voice. You can be more than one thing. I love this story, because we can be more than one thing. And what I love about Angie is she had the audacity to say that, and she had the audacity to do what she needed to do for the family to make sure the kids went to college, and she did. She sold the business. Now, I have the number, $250 million. Sea salt is what did it, by the way. That's the best one. All right. I'm an educator. I'm going to take a step back, and we're going to talk about what these words mean. So I've said them several times. Entrepreneurship, you have to be more entrepreneurial. Innovation is everything. Well, what does that mean? So you have notebooks on your table. Just sketch out a couple things, or pictures. What do those words mean to you when I keep saying them over and over and over?
Okay, when you put down a couple words, just reach across the table and share with your neighbor what you wrote down. How passions can evolve. 
So her passion evolved, and she created Bumble, the dating app where women make the first move. She literally reverse engineered social norms around dating and put the ball into women's courts. As of this month, Bumble's worth $3.1 billion. It's probably worth more because when I made this slide, it was about a month ago. She's one of the world's youngest self-made billionaires, and she still talks to this day about those horrible things she went through, but how innovation and entrepreneurship allowed her passion to evolve to help more women. Does everyone know what Bumble is? So even when you have passion, roadblocks, challenges, speed bumps can come up. It could be family and friends saying, why should you start that business? You have a college degree, you should just get a job. Or, why should you take that job? You have such a great business idea. Or it could be barriers to starting a business. But roadblocks will come up. But there's always camp up. <laughs> Does everyone know what Canva is? Okay, if you don't know what Canva is, you most likely have consumed it because if you're on social media, everyone is using Canva. What I love about it is it's always positive things that I find on Canva. And I made all my slides on Canva as well. So at 19 years old, Melanie Perkins said, gosh darn it, everyone deserves a right to good design. It should just be accessible. Shouldn't it be this hard to have to pay a subscription to Adobe and do all these things? So she started with yearbooks and she built a platform to make yearbook design more collaborative and just a little easier to use. She decided let's make it bigger because everyone in the world deserves access to good design. So she was in Australia. She filed for a visa to come to the States to Silicon Valley to raise money from her pitch deck that she printed out. She did not use an iPad, but she printed out her slides. And she was rejected 150 times. 150 times she got up and people said, no, no, no. She went back home. She did not go back home because they said no. She went back home because her visa ran. During that time, she met another investor, who met another investor, and they fell in love with the product idea. They invested in her, and now her company, I have up here $26 billion it's worth, but I, ugh, today, I read a social media post that it's worth $40 billion. It's on Australia's most successful unicorn list, which means your company's worth a billion dollars. And she is killing it. And if you are an avid user of Canva, you know she's always innovating. Something new is popping up all the time, every day. I love this story because in the life of no, 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 Melanie still got up every day off of that couch in her brother's apartment in Silicon Valley. And she hit the ground and she kept asking for money. So I said earlier, you don't have to go far to find inspiration. I'm not going to call out my mom again, because I, I don't know if she would like that. <laughs> but you could go across the street to Crestview Hills Mall, to a place called Chicken Salad Chick. Who has had Chicken Salad Chick? OK. I have not, because a little secret, I'm vegan. So I've been writing her a lot. This story is not just a story about a restaurant. Stacy Brown, her story is significant, at least to me, very much, because of, we have a lot of similarities. But today I'm going to talk about her story, where one day her husband said, she's not working out for me. I think we need a divorce. He left, and she had three kids, because he left the whole family. And she said, Hmm, how am I going to, she probably would say innovate, but how am I going to innovate my life now? What do I know how to do really well to make money? And that's making chicken salad. So she started producing it in her kitchen. 
So door to door out of a basket, and next time you're there, look at the logo, there's a basket on her arm. She was doing really well. And a neighbor called the health department on her. I know, right? <laughs> Shut her down. But then she said, this is an opportunity. I think this is a sign saying I should go for it even more. She found a 500 square foot little brick and mortar to produce chicken salad. She named all the sandwiches after chicks who have motivated her in her life. I think there's one man on that list. I don't know who that is. But now she's one of the top franchises in the United States. This story motivates me so much because even when she was going through a traumatic turn of events, she shook up her life, said, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to make a new life for me and my kids. And she did it. And one day I hope she has a vegan option. <laughs> so I'm going to start to close off. I have a couple more things to say. I heard my mom giggle. She doesn't know what's coming. I challenge you, my call to action to you today is be a woman who innovates in your everyday life. And I hope that this presentation has given you examples of how you can recognize entrepreneurship and innovation, not in just starting and growing a business, but how to pull inspiration from those women that have innovated in their life. There's a couple ways you can do that today. You've already done it. Reach across the table and meet someone new. I've already given you the prompts. You already have notes. Debbie, stand up. <laughs> you can reach out to Debbie Ship. She is creating the best professional development programs for adults, not just students, but also adults, and leadership programs. Shake up your life in education. Courtney did not have the baby yet. She's here. Courtney is always looking for mentors. We have some students here today. She's always looking for mentors to help them and assist with their, with their lives. Literally, you can eat a banana upside down and post on social media, I was an innovator today. Oh, this picture. This is our first dog. What's that dog's name, Mom? Lucille. Lucille. That's me, the cutest kid in the world. I don't know if mom knows this, but this is what I remember about the photo. And I remember I said, I've always been entrepreneurial. And I said, Lara, my sister, the other one, let's host a dog show. We're going to make money off of it. I'm going to go in and get my best dress on. I want you to do the same. It's something very nice. Very nice. She comes out with this. <laughs> Alright, Laura's an innovator. The dog won the dog show, by the way. <laughs> oh! So I am going to close off now. I want to say thank you. I truly, truly believe that women are the catalyst to entrepreneurship and innovation, to spark that fire that we all need. I want to thank Courtney and Thomas More University for this opportunity to bring us all together so we can share those stories connect with one another. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.